Okay, welcome. Uh, today is Monday, November 25th. It's noon. This is a meeting of the Ukushnet Board of Selectmen. All rise, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, we've got a uh, really single issue agenda today. Uh, we're going to be meeting with three candidates, three, three finalist candidates for our uh, town administrator position. We had one interview last Friday with one uh, uh, with one candidate. We're meeting with three people today. Uh, joining us at the head table is uh, Kevin Pecos, who in the past had served as uh, interim town administrator for the town of Akushna and is helping us with our with our search, as, as you both know, but for the community, is helping us with our search for our next town administrator. So uh, Mr. Pecos has been very helpful to the community and is also supporting um, our interim town administrator um, while she's uh, serving in that role. So um, our first appointment today is with Mr. John Healy, is a candidate for the uh, town administrator position in the town. Welcome, Mr. Healy. Thank you very Thank much. You. So uh, just sort of the, um, the uh, we've allocated an hour for each candidate, mm -hmm. and um, the process that we did for the first interview was allow you to, you know, to, to make some introductory comments. I mean, whatever you, wherever you want to go with it, why, why you should be our next town administrator. Yeah. Um, then we uh, opened it up for questions from the Board of Selectmen. We try to limit it uh, for us to 15 minutes each, you know, with, with, with open response on, on your sure. part. Um, and then there was some, some time uh, last time to do for some closing comments on that part as well. So just so you understand uh, what, what your schedule is going to look like. But um, yeah, that clock's a little, that's about right, I guess. So let me get down to the podium. And you can use, and, and behind the podium, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love being behind a podium myself. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, is make, there a motion to approve the consent agenda for today? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. And I'll second. Second. Any uh, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Back to you. So why don't, Thank uh, you, why don't we start, Ms. Healy, whenever you're ready. So, um, uh, you know, open comments, 10 to 15 minutes or, or five, however long it takes. And I'll, I'll watch the clock for you. Yeah, thank you very later. much. Good. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is John Healy. They call me Jack. Um, occasionally they call me other things, but uh, I prefer Jack. Uh, and um, as, as you know from reading my resume, uh, I've been in this business most of my life, adult life. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in sociology and a master's degree in community organization and development uh, from Springfield College. <coughs> and um, I've, I have uh, uh, over 47 years experience in the business. Um, after 22 years as the town manager in Middleborough, uh, back in 2007, I had maxed out my uh, years of service and, uh, and uh, as far as the retirement system was concerned. Um, and so I retired. Uh, I put that in quotes because I never intended to retire, retire. Uh, but I did want to collect my pension. My wife and I got in the motorhome the next morning at 5 a.m. And we went on a cross-country trip and didn't come back for six months. Uh, we had a wonderful time. Uh, but immediately on returning, um, I looked around to see what was available and found that the town of Southbridge uh, was looking for someone to fill in uh, for a, <coughs> a town administrator who, was, who had been terminated by the board. And so I, I interviewed and, and was hired for that job. Uh, Southbridge had a landfill and um, it was a very contentious subject matter in town, but um, uh, they were looking at the time that I came into town in January, they were looking at a new budget, looking at the next year's budget. And we're facing uh, affordab 
a four million dollar deficit. Um, and we, they were looking at laying off 28 people on general government side and on the school side. It was not a pretty picture. I read the contract with Casella Waste Management to operate the landfill and found that the town had put up a $7 million uh, uh, host community agreement uh, uh, bond and cash, a cash bond of $7 million. I immediately recognized that they didn't have a, a shortfall uh, of $7 million. Uh, they had a surplus, uh, I'm sorry, they, their shortfall was $2 million. They didn't have a shortfall in their budget. They had a surplus of funds and no, no shortfall. The result was that nobody got laid off uh, and, um, and uh, they were able to put $5 million in the reserve fund. So that was a very happy circumstance. It was uh, a good introduction. And uh, I really enjoyed the short time I was there and uh, helped them to get a new permanent town, town manager. Um, my next assignment was next door in Freetown. And I signed a three-year contract with them. Uh, following that three-year contract, I went to Westport for three years and uh, got invited back to, West, to Freetown for another three years. Uh, you have my resume and you all had a chance to review it so you know some of the things I was able to do for those communities in the short time that I uh, worked for them. I, I've applied for this job and would like to cons you to consider uh, hiring me for a three-year term. Uh, and um, at the end of that three years, we'll take a look, another look and see what, uh, how we all feel. Uh, I, uh, I assume you've all read and uh, absorbed what's in my application, so I won't take your time to go over it. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, and uh, uh, I thank you for considering me as your candidate. Excellent. Okay, so it's to me, I guess. Um, <coughs> thank you. Yeah. So are we each going to ask, I think, um, I believe you might have three. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but we're trying to, we're trying to trying to limit to fifteen yeah, minutes sure. of course. So it's uh, um, so just looking at the clock. So um, just if, talk about 15 the fifteen minutes per select. Per select. Yeah, 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 per select. So we're trying to you know question yeah. and answer within that time frame. So um, talk about the budgeting process and your experience in the budgeting process and how you approach that and uh, you know what that looks like from your perspective, how you work with the department heads, how you work with the Board of Selectmen, drafts back and forth, just yeah. how, how, do you, how do you manage that process, which is a very important part of, yeah. of your job. Well, initially I work it as a team with the treasurer, uh, the treasurer collector and the, uh, and the uh, uh, accountant and take a look at what, uh, what it looks like in terms of revenue and expenditures and or proposed expenditures, uh, and uh, then uh, we draft up some kind of a letter to all the department heads, uh, uh, drawing a little circle around what kind of funds are available, and um, and how we're going to treat the budgets, whether they have to submit a level-funded budget or whether there's room for <coughs> considering additional spending. Uh, once the once the uh, app, once the budgets are submitted, um, I review them, uh, and uh, we all review them initially uh, by ourselves, and then we get together as a group uh, to see what the opportunities are in terms of being able to meet the needs of the different departments. Um, I spend some time uh, with the finance officers. Uh, interviewing, uh, sitting with the selectmen and explaining to them uh, what the facts, the financial facts life are, uh, so that you know going in 
uh, what we're going to be facing, uh, and um, and then we go at it and we try to come up with a balanced budget uh, and try to stay away from some of the rainy day funds if we can. That's often very difficult to do. But um, the uh, the object is to meet the needs of the town uh, with the least possible addition to the budget and um, and staying away from, staying away from the uh, 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 the savings account, if you will, those accounts in the town. What do you, uh, just a sort of related question, uh, free cash balancing, you know, what, what's free cash, the role of free cash in balancing the budget? And yeah. I know some think it's fine and some think it's, we shouldn't touch a penny of it. Yeah, well, I, I like to stay away from it. It's not free and it's not cash. It's, you know, so. <laughs> <coughs> it's a good idea for to try and uh, leave it alone, but uh, depending on uh, on what the numbers are, you know, you might want to tap it a little bit. Okay. Um, second question, also sort of budget related, finance related, uh, money management related. Um, I'm not going to, you know, we're we're one town that from a government perspective is in some ways divided in half. You've got the departments that report to the Board of Selectmen and, that, and the school department which reports to the school committee and has their own uh, business office and, and, yeah. and leadership structure and elected, sure. uh, has, has elected leadership in the school committee. And um, I've sort of seen both sides of the relationship between the two sides of town. Uh, one where there was a lot of animosity, where it was, you know, every penny they got was money they stole from us. And, you know, the, the side where um, it was more cooperative, where we all acknowledged there was a pool of money and yeah. um, we could, we all had to manage within the available resources we had and we all had to manage to available uh, uh, um, uh, available growth in our budget. So, yeah. just talk about your past relationships, I guess, with with school departments and how you've facilitated their involvement in the budget process yeah. and uh, uh, worked cooperatively. I've always, I've always, fortunately, been blessed to have uh, to work with school superintendents who knew what uh, the realities of life were, and uh, I didn't have to explain to them that. Uh, we had this was a joint effort to stay within the budget and meet m as many of the needs of, of the town and the school as we possibly could. Uh, I don't remember a single time when uh, I had to preside over any kind of a fight over money between the towns and the, that I worked for and the school. Uh, as I said, I think I was blessed uh, in that regard. Uh, but um, the first, the first superintendent of schools in Middleborough, uh, where I uh, served as town manager for 22 years, was Dr. Sullivan. Uh, he was a huge man, um, six foot six, uh, and and he had a t uh, an office in the town hall, right across the hall from mine. Um, his desk was under a stairwell. Uh, he was he was very willing to do to live an, a minimalist life as the school superintendent. Uh, I'm telling you this story about his office for that reason. Um, he could barely squeeze under the stairwell to <coughs> sit in his desk. <laughs> Uh, and would not move out of town hall. He was not even going to think about moving into one of the schools. He wanted to stay right where he was and not use up valuable space in the school facilities. <laughs> so um, he and I got along well, uh, and um, he uh, his tenure was uh, very similar to mine. Um, I think I. Uh, I was there uh, eight years after uh, he finally did retire. Uh, but I have always been able to work with the school side, both 
uh, the superintendents and the school boards. I've never been able to find not to, to never been able not to find a middle ground where we could agree to what the division of the pie was going to be. So uh, I think that's I think that's due to my ability uh, to agree to disagree agreeably and to work cooperatively to an end point where we uh, made the division of the funds uh, a task that we both worked at without uh, without rancor, without trying to outdo one another and trying to work to accommodate as many of both school and town needs as we could. Great. Thank you. Mr. Gasper. You know. All right. What sources of revenue would you use to balance budgets? Uh, well, um, all of them. Um, the uh, uh, departmental revenues, um, the uh, uh, all of the line items in, in the budget. Um, is is there something I'm missing in the question? Yeah, what if I said, what sources of revenues would you use to balance budgets year over year? Additional revenues. Year oh, over additional year. revenues. If other revenues became available during the course of the year, is that? Such as the tax levy. Yeah. There's, so according to the DOR, there's, there's certain revenues outside of what we're already balancing the budget on, yeah. you know, which is school A, chapter 78, yeah. and everything else. The DOR says that there's certain revenues that you should only apply towards balancing your budgets for the next year mm -hmm. outside of what you did the previous year. That's what I'm looking for. For the following year? Yeah. For the following year? I'm, um, I'm sorry. I no. I, no. Okay. What, what experience do you have negotiating with unions in the municipal sector? Um, many, many years. <laughs> some examples, maybe? You, yeah. yeah. Just well, some examples. What, what, of maybe what were some of the outcomes when you, in your past experience negotiating with unions in the municipal sector? Some of your past experiences that you've had, as far as percentage-wise, have you have you always kept it to a limit, or have you been in negotiations where there's you know exorbitant amounts? Of no, we've percentages? always had a target limit. Target we've limit. always set a target limit. Have you achieved those limits in the past? Yes, sir. Do you believe that the current public pension system is sustainable? If so, why? If not, what reform would you suggest to make it sustainable? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> the answer is no and I don't know. Okay, very good. At year end, departments are able to transfer money from one line item to another. In the past, those transfers would be voted on by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee before the expenditure could be made. Yeah. In the last few years, that process has diminished. What is your opinion regarding this issue? I, I think it's a good idea to involve the, the uh, finance committee and the selectmen. At least uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise at the end of the day to either of those boards. I'm not, uh, um, I'm not one to showboat or get out in front of the boards that I work with. So, Mr. Chairman, this is um, going a lot faster than what we uh, expected. Okay, that's, that's all right. I will, I will yield right. my time, as that's I said. Yield, my, yield my time. I will yield my time. Mr. DeRoche. Mr. DeRoche, thank you very much. <coughs> Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, in line with pension liabilities, I'd like to just talk about uh, OPEP liabilities. Yeah which are perhaps the greatest single underreported, underscrutinized, and underfunded liability within our state and our town. And I'm sure the surrounding towns are no different. Yeah. The Cushions OPEP liability is in the vicinity of $14 million. Mm -hmm. 
and we have 300k in the trust fund. Right. Could you please tell us how you have handled this issue in previous towns, and if you would do the same in a Um I'd have to take a look at, at your specific situation uh, before I comment on what I'd recommend you do, but uh, other post-employment benefits are always, um, a, you know, a worry, mm -hmm. uh, because um, uh, because they they have a tendency to uh, increase year after year, and you've got no real way of dealing with that without uh, putting something else off. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I'd, I'd have to take a look at uh, your budget and what your existing situation was mm -hmm. uh, before I'd offer and, and talk to the financial offices before I'd offer a suggestion as to how you might be able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because right now we're pay as we go, which I yeah. don't know if that's how it was in other towns that yeah. you had previously yeah. been involved with. For the most part, yeah. Pretty much. Did they look for any other types of um, revenues from outside? Did they, um, you know, uh, how else do you raise revenues, I guess? Did they mm -hmm. look at solar? Did they look at different things? Um, I, I really would have to take a look at the situation in order to respond. Okay. In your cover letter, you tout that you're a team builder and an encourager. Yes. So my question is how to create a team atmosphere for the town employees? Um, by respect, by respecting them and their, their responsibility and their opinions. Um, working together as a team. This is a team building exercise, you know, um, and um, helping helping them to develop skills that they might be missing. Uh, once again, uh, one of my uh, one of my letters of recommendation is from uh, Diane Pellin. She's now the town clerk in Swansea, and it's an elected position there, but uh, she uh, calls attention to the fact that um, I worked with her and other town department heads uh, to identify what their skills were and what they weren't, and to help them grow in their position. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's that's the trick. <laughs> you you deal with what you got, and you help them to be better at what they do. And um, that's never been difficult for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, you either um, have that ability to relate to people or you don't. Mm -hmm. And one more question: How do you balance the town's desire to employ the best and the brightest employees? with the town's ability to pay them? Um, I can't say we've never lost uh, an employee to uh, uh, to an, another another community or to uh, private sector. Uh, but, um, you know, you, you work with them to see what you can do to make sure that their skill set that's working for you uh, uh, get lost because of something you could do that you didn't do. But uh, it, it, it happens. Yep. It happens. But uh, don't let it happen uh, for failure to do something to try to make it uh, better. That's all. Well, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, those are the questions that we had. Does anybody else have anything else that they want to throw in at this point? <coughs> at this time, I'm all set. Um, so, um, closing comments. Why help help convince us why we should hire you as our next town administrator in the town of Bush? Yes. Um, I guess I'd say that um, I I I have the ability uh, and uh, the desire to continue to do what I've done for years. Uh, and um, I understand 
that um, there's an, another candidate that's already on your staff uh, and um, uh, has been a finance officer uh, most of her life. She's an attorney as well, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd be more than happy if it was the board's wish, uh, if you chose me uh, as your next town administrator to work with her. Uh, perhaps you could use some of the uh, pay that you're not going to pay me, which is another great feature of my candidacy, I think. Uh, <laughs> I can only uh, make <clears throat> around fifty-five thousand dollars a year because of I'm taking down a pension check. Everybody else is going to be, uh, you know, uh, higher three times. <laughs> higher. 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 higher than that. double. Yeah, yeah. way higher. higher. So you're proposing working full time? For I'm that? proposing no. working full time. Yes, uh, but. Um, Perhaps some of the money you save could be used to pay a stipend uh, to uh, uh, your uh, financial officer who wants to become the town administrator with a view to it possibly, uh, they're possibly taking over at the end of that three year period. Um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be a uh, cost to you from uh, uh, health insurance or other benefits point of view, but I'm also going to leave you with some funds that you could either not spend and put away for a rainy day or use in some other fashion mm -hmm. to the tune of uh, about $100,000 a year. So maybe that's an option. I don't know. Uh, I've, not, I've not inquired about it. Uh, but uh, and and with anybody officially, but I wanted to let, let you know that that's that's one of the things you have available to you to do, should you make a decision to do that. It's very difficult, Mr. Chairman. It's, it's very difficult for us. To yes, I just to acknowledge back that yeah. comment. See yeah. how she is up for an interview. So I understand. You know, I it just wanted to put it out there. Something that you might want to think. I don't know if you were looking for a, a response. No, I'm not looking for a response. Before we start jumping I in, it's extremely difficult for yeah. us to make no, no, any no. comments to Thank a you very much, potential Ken. candidate. So I understand. But let me let me let me follow that path, though. Um, who would have to approve that? From my, just assuming that happened, you, who would have to approve your collecting fifty-five thousand and working full time? Is that oh, no. does the pension board have to approve it, or you said assuming? Uh, I've already it? cleared it. Okay. In a number of cases where I've worked before, so I know it's the, that's the situation. I've, I've cleared it again uh, with David Sullivan, who's the uh, Plymouth County Retirement Board uh, Executive. Okay. So it's uh, it, it doesn't need to be cleared. It's it's a policy and a fact of life. Mm -hmm. If it helps the board, a lot of <coughs> town managers who retire and take their pension go back and work on the zones and work as many, there's an hour limitation and a salary limitation. The hour limita limitation is easily exceeded just because when you hit the hours, you volunteer after that. The yeah. salary limitation, as Jack is suggesting, is commonly exceeded because once you hit the salary limitation, after that, you volunteer. So the four months I worked for you as interim three years ago, I didn't receive any compensation. Your council had me sign an agreement that said I recognized I was not gonna be compensated um, but I would do the work as a set, a set by the board um, on a voluntary basis. And what Jack's describing what I've done, many of the town managers are doing now um, yeah. because it gets you out of the house. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, careful, be careful. <laughs> in my case, it gets me out of the house. In be Jack's careful. case, he's actually doing it professionally again. So, yeah. And his other town managers, so there's no approval required. It's up to the individual yeah. manager. In terms of what the amount is that they can be paid, it's actually set by the community you work for. Yeah. According to a formula, the town treasurer has to, has to ask for the records from the pension, from the county pension, and then and the records from the predecessor she already has and is a formula for how much it can be paid. 
So she gets that, she certifies it to you, and then you incorporate that amount into the contract that you would presumably negotiate. Yeah. And then that's the number that can be paid. And then what that number can be X dollars for ho however many hours you and the uh, individual want to agree to. Um, by definition, usually you agree to a real salary for some portion of the hours. And then after that, the person is doing it voluntarily. And it's actually signed so that they are signing it's that they are doing this. Okay. So it's commonly done. Yeah, I can share the three contracts I've had with Freetown okay. uh, in Westport and Freetown again. But uh, and back, back to you on to the, we're on the closing comments, so back, yeah. back to you on that. So. Yes, thank you. I know we hijacked you a little bit. That's okay. Go ahead. What that amounts to is um, uh, a percentage of the current town administrator's uh, salary uh, in the town that I left, retired from, okay, <coughs> plus $15,000. In my case, that adds up right now to about $55,000. Okay. All right. So I, uh, you want, uh, is my turn for closing comments? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, I think very, uh, seriously that my, my experience is hard to be. And that, um, what I'm able to do for you in terms of bringing you the opportunity to save $100,000 a year for three years or whatever it turns out to be um, uh, is, is something that um, I've done three times already. I'm retirement fund, six months on the road. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and as I said, I've, uh, I've loved every bit of uh, the uh, work I've done since retirement. Uh, and um, I'd like to, like to get right back in it and do it again. Um, I know that there's a lot of things that have got, gone undone. Some of them, one of them uh, is cleaning up the other half of the Freetown screw site, which happens to be on your side of the line. <laughs> um, I've, brought, I've worked successfully uh, in all the communities I've worked with uh, between the town and the gown, and uh, never had never had a pro problem with it. Don't anticipate I would now. Once again, I think it's uh, it's what your management style is, what you how you approach an issue or a problem <coughs> that uh, that, de that determines whether you're going to be successful or not. Um, it um, it's what I do. I guess, bottom line, I'll leave you with that. Uh, I love what I do. Thank you. Okay. Haley, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You want me to get out of here so you can... Yeah, we're early, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> take your time getting out of here. We're good. All right. All right. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. much. Thanks, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Why don't we? Uh, I'm sorry. If, if, I'll tell you if Mr. Mike, if Mr. Mullen is here, we'll take him now. But sure. if not, we'll. I, I think we'll recess and. Yep. Yeah. Um, you point I point. need uh, ten minutes. Yeah. Why don't, we, ten minute minute recess? Recess? why don't we motion for a ten minute recess? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We're on recess to return in ten minutes. Twelve forty-five. <laughs> It is still November 25th. Um, this is our second, uh, our second interview for the town administrator position. I'd like to welcome Michael Mullen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mullen. I'll just uh, go through uh, what the schedule is. So we're starting at, at quarter of one. So uh, we've allocated an hour for each interview, but as you know already, we ran a little bit quick on the first one, and quick is good. So if you'd want to do it quick, that's fine. We're, we're okay with that. So uh, don't feel an obligation to use the whole hour, but, but the hour is yours if you want it. So um, basically going to let you make a couple of introductory comments. As go, you know, take 15 minutes if you want. Um, then coming to the, uh, to the three selectmen, we each have uh, questions to ask. I have, you know, it's two to five, I think, uh, uh, based on the selectmen. And 
Um, then at the end, we'll go back to you for comments on why we should select you as our next town administrator. So uh, with that introduction, I'll start with you. Um, just a brief introduction of yourself well, and whatever you, whatever you want to do. Welcome. Well, sir. thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, really for the opportunity to come before you as a finalist um, this afternoon. My name is Mike Mullen, um, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to work uh, for you and for the residents um, all over Kushner as your next town administrator. Uh, just a little bit about um, myself as I outlined in my resume. Uh, like I've worked, uh, I've really worked in state and local government for most of my career now. Uh, like I've worked at the State House for more than six years um, in both the House and Senate. Um, I served as a Chief of Staff to the former Mayor of Brockton. Um, I've been working uh, for the last uh, two and a half years um, as the Assistant County Director and now the County Director all uh, for the uh, County of Norfolk, uh, like in really managing and administering all, the, all of their operations as well. And um, really for the past oh, nine years, but there's been like a few breaks, I've been involved in my hometown of Rockland. Uh, like I said, for six years um, on the school committee and uh, three years, the past three years, um, as a member of, of the Board of Selectmen. Um, so I understand all of the choice and the responsibility and exactly what you're going through now uh, because about uh, six months ago uh, I went through the same thing as a member of the board and oh uh, you know I mean uh, uh, working to choose someone to lead your uh, town forward is oh uh, it's it's really an important responsibility and I get that and I get oh uh, you know the responsibility that all uh, each of you have um, had over the last uh, few months and Oh, like making sure the process has worked and um, in terms of really uh, getting to today. Um, so as I've outlined really, I've always had a passion for local government and public service. Uh, like I really love the nuts and bolts of it all. Um, I enjoy working with the board to set priorities and working with residents uh, to really achieve those priorities and goals. Um, uh, like I love achieving them uh, through the operating budget, through grant initiatives and opportunities, through planning um, efforts and initiatives um, and other opportunities. I just love uh, the project management uh, part of the job. I've built uh, uh, like a really good track record of success with that. Um, and, I, and I really enjoy that all because I really do believe in, um, it's how I've always operated, that you can really um, have the most impact serving people. Um, and that's what it's all about, serving people at the local level. Um, and so I became uh, interested in a cushion um, and in the position of town administrator when I did learn uh, that your former town administrator had been hired in East Bridgewater. Uh, like I really began learning at the town um, at that point and trying to oh, assess whether I'd be a good fit here. Um, and you know, there were some like, communities based on uh, the culture and the dynamics where people really don't fit. Um, and then there were other cases where Oh, uh, you know, all uh, individuals are a uh, really good fit. And uh, so over the past two months, really, I spent some time here. Um, I've attended events. Uh, like I've gone to a few events and meetings. Uh, like, and I really, uh, like I really got to appreciate all that a cushion is about. Uh, the uh, community pride here, the leadership of your board um, has really impressed me. The, uh, you know, but the fact that a cushion it is Oh, you know, like a real working class family community, uh, you know, oh, it's really important to me. That's how I was brought up. That's uh, the type of community that I work in and lead now. And, you know, like all of that combined with another thing that uh, truly struck me was uh, the priority that your board and the town places on uh, the history of the community and preserving that history um, and a lot of the things like the, um, I'll, Oh, you know, uh, like the sawmills and the different uh, parts of the uh, community that you invest in and you take pride in and um, and all that. So when you really combine all that with the leadership of the board, with the town's fiscal position, um, and really the interview that I had with the screening committee, uh, like I don't I want to be hokey, but that interview was really fun uh, because I like I really got to understand from the people on the. Oh, really from the individuals on the screening committee who are all, oh, you know, community leaders here in town, exactly what the town was all about. Oh, you know, I think they were a really amazing cross-section of the town. Uh, like, and I had fun, 
a lot of times interviews aren't fun. Um, but, you know, uh, the other evening it was really fun. Oh, uh, 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 hearing their thoughts about the town, showing, oh, you know, the skills and expertise that I uh, think I can really bring. And, you know, uh, that evening really sold me on the town. I really uh, left there excited about the opportunity. Um, and I'm excited about uh, the opportunity today. I've, uh, as I mentioned, like I spent some time here. Um, Oh, I've learned about the town. I've learned about the really positive uh, things and the projects that you've uh, have done in the past few years and that you're going uh, like and plan on uh, doing forward. Um, and I would just really love to become a part of its future to work with you and for you to help lead all those efforts forward. So uh, that's that's it, Mr. Chairman. I was told you were here for the Veterans Day uh, event. Uh, yes, I was. I attended that. I attended a school committee meeting uh, last week. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, actually, this past week. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a lot of, there's uh, a lot of controversy. Yeah, that was a busy meeting. Yes. Yes. It was yes. A busy meeting. <laughs> and um, um, and then actually, uh, last weekend, uh, like, actually, my family, my wife, and two kids. I have uh, two two and a half year old twins. Uh, like, and we came down for the Christian at PTO craft fair, uh, like at the middle school, and that was really fun. It was jam packed. Oh, uh, can I really got all uh, to get a sense of the community there as well? Okay. So again, uh, uh, questions. We're each going to ask you a few questions. We're asking the same questions to, the, to each candidate. Um, so we're we're sort of on script. But um, so I want to talk about budgeting. Budgeting is a, a, a big part of the town administrator's job. And, Absolutely. Um, give us an understanding of uh, of how many budgets you've been involved in developing in the past. Mm -hmm. and, and what you think that process would look like in the town of Akushan, and how you would manage that mm -hmm. process working with the department heads and the board of selectmen. As an elected official, uh, like in those roles, um, I've been part, I've um, been involved in the budget process, uh, you know, in each of the six years that I was a member of the school committee, um, and also um, uh, uh, each of the three years, and last year, uh, especially based on the dynamics uh, that we had happening in town uh, during the past year, I was in. Uh, really involved in those efforts, but really, um, I've been my experience in Brockton um, in the last actually two and a half years, uh, like in Norfolk County, that I've been, oh, uh, you know, but the person like responsible for the budget, uh, you know, writing the budget, projecting revenues, um, oh, uh, you know, uh, really making sure, oh, uh, you know, all the revenues, oh, uh, and, and the projections there really work out. Uh, to what the expenditures in reality are going to be. Uh, like in that process, usually, oh, uh, you know, in the oh, uh, in the roles that I've had now, that process really begins right now. Oh, uh, you know, oh, uh, I can really, oh, uh, you know, uh, meeting with department heads, oh, uh, assessing their needs and where they think they want to go as a department, oh, uh, and then really bringing the town or the entities, oh, uh, finance team together to look, oh, uh, like at oh, uh, where the revenues might. I'll be trending as well, so you can uh, actually, I will begin looking at those. Oh, and then really having that process uh, evolve over the foreseen months. Uh, you know, one of the things, I mean, everyone um, in the first part of January, uh, you know, uh, um, I can really focus on uh, Chapter 70 and local aid. Um, and I think in the years to come, especially the uh, the conversation and the work being done on Chapter 70 in that formula right now, uh, you know, I think that focus is going to become uh, like even more important because hopefully, uh, you know, uh, the bill that just actually was signed into law does, uh, oh, you know, has some good investments attached to it and, oh, uh, you know, and don't have any unintended consequences in terms of, uh, like, really increased funding for local communities um, as well. But it's really working to piece all that together. Um, you know, I've um, been working with the finance committee all uh, in that all uh, in that process and working with them in that process to really uh, like every year and every organization and entity uh, you know there's a lot of all uh, paring down and priority setting uh, that has to happen just based on all uh, the real actual needs compared to what the revenues are and um, uh, I can I have a track record of really doing that I'll uh, Oh, like in building a consensus with people, uh, like in with town departments and uh, like elected and appointed officials to really, oh, you know, to find consensus and to determine, oh, uh, really in a way, and especially with the school departments, uh, like in a way that that is all done together and that works for everyone as a town, 
Oh, you know, going into the final vote, uh, like in oh, like in the county's case, it's the advisory board meeting. Uh, like in, in all of the town cases, um, all, all the efforts are heading up to town meeting as well. But, oh, uh, you know, I built on um, a track record of being able to do that. Uh, one of the things, especially at the, uh, like in the county, uh, during the last two and a half years, uh, the county funding is largely based on revenues that come in uh, from the Registry of Deeds, based on, um, on the recording fees and the deeds excise tax. Uh, like in generally speaking, in Norfolk County, those revenues have fallen, um, actually, by about 800000 in the past three years. Uh, so, like, we've had to make some, uh, you know, of a difficult cuts, uh, you know, like in painful choices just to be able to balance uh, and to really be able to maintain all the services that we have. And those uh, conversations haven't been fun, but I've been able to have them. Uh, like, I've been able to have them effectively. And in some cases, uh, again, like going back to the county, the structural, uh, there exists a structural, there exists a structural funding issue. Uh, uh, like in my opinion with county governments uh, based on the fact that there's a 1981 formula um, and then as I mentioned uh, like about 40% of our revenues are just oh based on registry of these expenses or the fees and and when those fees decrease significantly uh, like obviously oh uh, you don't have ven uh, revenues available uh, like and it's really I uh, mean there's not a whole lot of people uh, that understand why and how that happens um, and it's really the expectation setting it's working uh, to highlight these issues with uh, like our county commissioners with our advisory board uh, I can really breaking that all, all down and to highlight that uh, for them so it's all uh, like a little bit of education um, it's highlighting those issues and again really building consensus along the way um, and I've been able to do that we um, have uh, in the county a 31 million dollar operating budget which Oh, it's very similar to the town of Acushnets. Uh, also, I really think being able to work uh, with the finance team here to be able to continue doing that to make uh, the investments that I know are important to the board um, and working with the board to do that. Uh, like I really believe I have all the abilities and I'd be really strong in that aspect. Thank you. Uh, question two. Uh, in a community like Cushion and in most communities, you've got two sides of government. Um, you've got the school department, which is managed by a superintendent mm -hmm. and an elected school committee, and what we call the town side, which is managed by the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. and, um, over the years, there have been two ways of, you know, that's been cooperative and confrontational, and it's been both. And I, I prefer cooperative, um, but I've seen the confrontational as well. We're all fighting for the same dollar. Exactly. And I guess. Uh, just comment as to um, how you would work as a as representative of the Board of Selectmen, how you would work with the school department and the superintendent and mm -hmm. the school department business manager and the school committee to, to foster a, co a cooperative environment and, and uh, create an understanding that we're, we're, we're a team. And, and yes, no, and I understand it completely. I like, can frankly, I like in all the environments uh, that I've been in, each of the three I described really, I like, can even with the city of Brockton, uh, you know, I, I've always approached um, other conversation as exactly that. We're a team and we're one community. Uh, like, and that's how it should operate because uh, and, uh, I mean, the reality is that we are. Um, and I, uh, one of the things that really frustrates me is when uh, you know, there's a, a dynamic that exists where there are uh, two entities that are really perceived as separate. Um, and, and I've been Oh, you know, part of environments where that relationship is really healthy, um, and I've been part of uh, environments uh, where that relationship has been awful. Uh, oh, like, and really, like, I have made it a focus to, uh, like, actually reset the relationship, and oh, uh, like, and really move it into a productive one going forward. Uh, oh, so that being said, uh, like, I believe that the relationship with the uh, school department is really about communication. Uh, <coughs> Uh, like, and it's about expectation setting. Um, I think as long, oh, you know, obviously there are limited revenues that go around, and uh, that's inherent. Um, uh, oh, but I think in terms of expectation setting, oh, like, and communicating, and oh, you know, in those conversations, like communicating, 
from the superintendent what the needs actually are, uh, you know, on an ongoing regular basis, I think is imperative. Um, I, um, um, I think one of the things, oh, for example, that uh, oh, really speaks to the priority and the relationship that you have with the schools here, uh, like is, oh, uh, the example uh, that the board and the school department to uh, establish two years ago with the Special Education Stabilization Fund. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, there's a town understanding uh, oh, from everything that I've read and oh, and there appears to be that there are some expenses in the school department uh, like special ed services uh, that are unpredictable. Uh, I mean, the fact that the town understood that and made a good faith effort uh, oh, you know, to not only create that fund but to fund the fund uh, like I think uh, really speaks to the relationship and the importance uh, like of the partnership and the uh, collaboration uh, that you want with uh, the uh, school department. And uh, uh, last year in Rockland, for example, I, uh, there was like a crazy school payroll issue where every time the school department uh, sent over their payroll to the town accountant's office, uh, the whole thing would blow up. I mean, it literally blow up. And and uh, the chairman of the school committee and myself would all uh, be on the phones really trying to do the work of, you know, the department heads who we were paying to do the work. And uh, all of us, so I understand all that, oh, uh, you know, but again, um, it's really working to communicate, uh, like it's uh, to have this ongoing understanding from uh, the school department and the town side about what the needs actually are um, and its expectation uh, setting along the way uh, to make sure everyone is rowing uh, in the same boat and going in the same direction as a community. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. No problem. Thank you. Mr. Gasper. Thank you, Mr. Jemmett. <clears throat> what experience do you have negotiating with unions in the municipal sector? Oh, I've, um, I've done that for most of my uh, career now. I've, uh, like I've, did that, um, I've done that as a member of the school committee. I've done that as a selectman. Oh, uh, not only have I Oh, negotiated with unions. I've uh, also uh, negotiated with non-union personnel and department heads. Uh, the school superintendent, school superintendent, the town administrator, um, um, all county employees as well. But specific to collective bargaining, uh, 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 going back to when I was 22, uh, like I was actually on all uh, the bargaining our uh, team to negotiate with our teachers, our teacher aides. Um, uh, school secretaries and our custodians. Oh, uh, you know, so I learned early on um, um, exactly what the process really was. Oh, uh, you know, uh, the importance of the process, uh, uh, the laws and how you have to respect that process, or if you don't, uh, you know, the liabilities that uh, really come along with that. Uh, you know, and I've always uh, understood that the process is important to employees and to communities. Uh, I can fast forward um, I like into uh, uh, the past few years as I uh, like uh, like uh, as a selectman and as a county administrator. Oh, uh, that's exactly what I do for the county. I'm the chief negotiator. Uh, like, and I'm actually in the process. I uh, like a bargaining uh, now with our three units. Uh, like, and frankly, oh, uh, uh, without giving away, oh, uh, oh, uh, you know, we're running a follow of our ground rules. Oh, uh, you know, we're trying to make real. Our reforms in those processes, dealing with, oh, uh, you know, a sick time buyback, dealing uh, with overtime policies <coughs> to really, um, uh, like, address issues, oh, uh, with overtime policies, um, and also we'll really try to, oh, uh, you know, we'll make the county government more sustainable through our contracts as well, oh, uh, uh, you know, but so I understand how to, oh, uh, uh, really approach those processes from. Uh, just you know a cost of living um, I'll exercise and really like costing all those oh uh, you know contracts out and uh, how much for example education incentive how much are uh, those uh, what the true cost of those things are oh uh, uh, but also using the process to make our uh, needed reforms and adjustments in terms of you know a sick time buyback and overtime policies and those things um, as an example and I've uh, like, and I believe I've been effective at it because, again, uh, it goes back to, oh, uh, you know, a building trust, building respect between um, and across the table, 
how I can build in consensus to achieve those goals, and, uh, and that's what I've always done, and that's what I've been effective at. Thank you. Do you believe that the current pump public pension system is sustainable? If so, why? If not, what reform would you suggest to make it sustainable? Um, generally speaking, uh, like I believe it's fairly sustainable. Oh, by and large, you do um, have employees contributing, excuse me, contributing to and self-funding their own pensions. Oh, one of the things that really uh, inhibit that on a regular basis, however, um, is when, uh, like in order uh, to balance budgets, there are some, uh, the reality is when all the state officials get involved um, and they have a track record of sometimes oh kicking the liability can down the road uh, oh you know but that's when it becomes really problematic and uh you know if they could oh really stick to a funding date uh, oh in my opinion that would be helpful uh you know i'm oh and i believe in the past few years there hasn't been any changes unless uh, i've been wrong but i do know going uh through the tougher years and the uh, like in the 2009-2010, uh, um, in order just to balance all operating budgets, all of the state um, at that time uh, did allow the can to be kicked down the road, and that um, has inhibited um, oh, a lot of things with, um, about timelines. But generally speaking, oh, you know, uh, oh, from the employee point of view, I, oh, based on the current formula, I mean, you do have employees. Oh, you know, really self-funding their own pensions. Oh, uh, like, are there issues which, oh, really, oh, you know, a prompt reforms, yes. Um, and I think, you know, oh, like a look at reforms are always needed. Uh, that's just a healthy part of the uh, process. But uh, generally speaking, I think uh, it is a relatively fair system. Thank you. At year-end, department heads are able to transfer money from one line item to another. In the past, those transfers would be voted on by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee before the expenditure could be made. Okay. In the last few years, that process has diminished. What is your opinion regarding this issue? So you had to transfer the all oh, that were made conceivably after town meeting, correct? So at the year-end... Yep. Departments have the ability in the last 60 days of the calendar year yeah. where they have a budget and all line items in their budget in the last 60 days to move those funds around from within one line item to the other. And mm -hmm. now the law has changed to even include salaries. Okay. Okay. So at the end of the year, in those last 60 days, departments, if they haven't <coughs> expended money in certain, in certain budget line items, they have the flexibility to spend that money and, and intermingle those budget line items. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on that process? Do you believe that that should be expenditures, maybe over a certain dollar amount, um, be always voted on by the Board of Selectmen in the Finance Committee before the expenditures being made? Mm -hmm. Or would you just let a department spend, let's say, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on anything that they wanted to just because it's in their budget? Oh, and so completely. So you yeah. understand that? that uh, yes, no, exactly. Um, I mean, frankly, there's, all, uh, just in my mind, a bunch of pieces to that. Oh, uh, frankly, uh, uh, the Board of Selectmen, uh, like in the town administrator, really should be aware of that. Uh, like, and frankly, oh, uh, you know, oh, uh, I mean, I think it's, oh, uh, really, the board's part, uh, like, uh, like it is, oh, uh, the board as a whole, your prerogative, whether you want to establish a policy, uh, like, or a bylaw in terms of how to, oh, uh, really deal with that and spell that out. Um, oh, and I think that's, Oh, if it's important to the board, oh, you know, obviously that will just be the rule and that'll be the policy that all our uh, department heads, that's the expectation uh, uh, that everyone has to follow. Um, in terms of, I mean, I understand, oh, uh, you know, the flexibility, um, uh, oh, you know, for departments, oh, uh, that is, oh, uh, like a lot of times, really needed for them to meet year end and uh, oh you know oh if they have one account uh, that just because of the nature 
uh, oh, whether it's an overtime account or whatever account, oh, you know what, uh, there might be a good reason why, uh, oh, they have to make a transfer to have that zero out at the end of the year. Um, and I think like a conversation, an ongoing conversation with the Board of Selectmen, uh, oh, like, and the Finance Committee and the Town Administrator is really uh, helpful and necessary. Oh, uh, what is really problematic in my opinion, if it's uh, happening, uh, like is just having a department head moving around money to spend money. Oh, uh, you know, I think, oh, uh, you know, that would really need to be addressed because uh, at the end of the day, especially going uh, like uh, into understanding and projecting Oh, what your free cash numbers are, first of all. Oh, that all has oh, like an impact. I mean, if there's an opportunity, oh, you know, but to have like a real true free cash number, oh, as a town, you want to realize that. You don't want, oh, you know, our oh, money just spent because it's there or transferred because it's there. Um, on the other hand, also, looking into budgeting oh, for the following fiscal year, I mean, the, oh, um, in uh, my opinion, one of the number one things you want to be doing when, oh, uh, you know, uh, you're compiling the budget is understanding what your real true costs are. Mm -hmm. uh, like, oh, and if you're dealing, oh, uh, with artificial numbers, oh, uh, you know, that historically haven't moved around, I mean, that's, oh, uh, again, you know, you want some flexibility to be able to address issues, mm -hmm. uh, but on the flip side, you need to be able to know, oh, uh, what the real true numbers are, oh, uh, you know, you're really working with to operate with, but again, to my first point, um, if that's an issue, I would oh, really recommend to the board, if you want to look at it some more, oh, to come oh, up with a policy or bylaw in terms of how to manage uh, that whole situation, which, oh, what situations may be allowed and what situations um, they wouldn't, so. Thank you, Mr. Mullen, appreciate mm -hmm. it. No problem. No further questions. Yes, Mr. Roche. Okay. Another liability that this town faces is our OPEP situation. Understood. Um, and I'm sure that's no different <coughs> in the surrounding communities in the state. Yeah, exactly. Um, Christian's OPEP liability is in the vicinity of $14 million. Yep. And we have about $300,000 in our trust fund. Okay. Can you tell us how you've handled, or if you've had to handle this situation in previous towns, and uh, yeah. give us, generally speaking, how would you address this problem? Um, oh, and first of all, yes, you're exactly right, sir, that, oh, you know, the OPEB liabilities, oh, you know, oh, and the impact that it's having on every community, oh, on the Commonwealth, or anyone really who, oh, has to deal with Gatsby. Um, on oh, new gas P seventy four mm -hmm. on oh, seventy five requirements, those are real. Uh, oh, oh, you know, and those numbers and the liabilities, oh, you know, are showing up right on financial statements. Uh, oh, and it's having an impact. Um, I hope and I think uh, that the credit rating that the credit rating agencies are really they understand. Oh, why a lot of times you know a community's net position um, is in the negative, and oh, a lot of times. Uh, Oh, like it's only on uh, solely based on the OPEB liabilities, but it's certainly an issue. Oh, uh, you know, and there's many, uh, uh, as we all know, there's many uh, schools of thought, there's many uh, questions about whether the OPEB liabilities, whether they're real or true numbers, um, and what exactly they reflect, especially based on employees moving around so much now in municipal government. Oh, uh, but the fact of the matter is it does have to be dealt with. Um, and it should be dealt with, and, um, and all the uh, roles and the environments uh, uh, that I've worked in, especially in the past few years, we've made that uh, all a priority. For each of the three years, for each of the last three years um, in the county, for example, we've uh, funded uh, the annual contribution into our OPEB uh, trust fund at uh, 270, uh, actually at 250, 250 and $275,000. So, Oh, you know, there's like a due diligence, oh, you know, effort made because, again, it affects, oh, it does affect the bottom line. It affects, oh, you know, a credit rating when you want to go out to bond. It affects just your overall um, health and, you know, the picture of a, a community. So I understand, oh, you know, that that's an investment that has to be made. Um, and what oh, the town has been uh, doing, I think this year you funded all... Uh, a contribution in FY20 at $100,000, mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I 
I believe it was oh, uh, your last town meeting um, that the town voted oh, oh, to actually transfer our uh, trust fund over to the state, which oh, uh, you know, uh, the interest rates and the um, and the realization oh, uh, you know, of all uh, the liability being pretty significantly reduced uh, would be really helpful to the town and uh, you know but so I think the due diligence and um, and the commitment and the track record that the town oh uh, you know and really your board has shown oh uh, you know oh uh, uh, like in really meeting those goals and meeting that <coughs> obligation to continue uh, to really continue oh uh, you know ensuring the fiscal health and stability of the community is Oh, actually, it really should be commended. Oh, uh, you know, and if I, oh, like, and if I'm, if I have the honor, oh, enough of being hired, if I have the honor enough of being hired, I would work with you to continue all uh, those contributions and to build on the success, uh, you know, and the track record that, oh, uh, you know, all uh, the board has already demonstrated and created. Thank you. Now you got a little feel of a cushion. He says you drove through the reservoir and uh, Main Street. Main Street, yep, yeah, exactly. All, all yep. those areas around, and that. Um, what do you ever think of, or what kind of economic development do you think that the town might be able to uh, to gain? Right now we're ninety one percent residential. Yes. So it's is a burden on the uh, residents of a cushion mm -hmm. to come up with the money. Pay for things. And it's it's all on them. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so where do you stand on economic development in Akushan? Uh, yeah. I mean, having spent the time that I've spent here, I mean, I've oh, you know, just oh, as an aside, I've had breakfast uh, three times at the mill so far. I've had breakfast once at Rochelle's. And um, a lot of politics goes on there. So. Oh, I've, I, I I I did here, but. Um, <laughs> But I mean, especially in the South Main Street, oh, you know, corridor, uh, oh, you know, I think, oh, there could be some real opportunity there. Oh, you know, and going back to the town's uh, work, I think, going back a ways, but <coughs> oh, in 2013, I think the town's work with Serpent, oh, to look at that area, <coughs> oh, you know, but specifically, mm -hmm. oh, you know, and the thing is, oh, Oh, that could really come alive there. Uh, I think really provides a really good framework. Uh, 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 every time I drive in, I'm um, around the South Main Street area. I, uh, like I really see. Um, oh, not downtown has the same bones and has the same structure. I'm um, an opportunity, in my opinion. Oh, uh, you know, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, you really see a quaint, a uh, little village area. Oh, uh, just right across the river with the progress uh, that's happening in the city right over the river, uh, like attracting incubator spaces, oh, uh, you know, uh, over to the Slocum Street and the uh, South Main Street area. Oh, uh, you know, I think uh, the, uh, the opportunity is really incredible. Um, and at the same time, if, again, if I'm lucky enough to uh, come to the town, I would look out, uh, but to really advance and continue all uh, the partnerships, all of this up at, um, all, all I can also hope, all, all, I can, all I can hopefully bring, hopefully being able to bring the state down as well. Oh, there's a lot of opportunities with the state right now, all uh, like in terms of their mass downtown initiatives, um, all, all like exploring grants through the MathWorks program, all uh, to help complement uh, the economic development a need with infrastructure, uh, like in, uh, and, and at the same time that gets into issues with the CWMP, and you know we're really looking at, uh, you know how the conversation you're having about the CWMP, uh, like actually transcends in, oh uh, you know, but to really having an economic development plan that reflects, oh uh, uh, you know, uh, both sides of the picture, but oh uh, in short, like I really see, oh uh, you know, opportunity with South Main Street, but again. Uh, as with everything that happens in a community, oh, uh, you know those, oh, uh, you know those wishes, those hopes and dreams. They have to be really resident driven. Oh, uh, you know, oh, uh, they have to be the priorities of the residents. And oh, uh, you know, oh, uh, frankly, the board of selectmen. Oh, uh, oh, uh, 
because I really understand the need, uh, especially in a small town like Rock Panina Krishna, uh, based on the history, based on the real uh, small town charm and feel uh, uh, that the town has and the surrounding uh, neighborhoods around it, you want to make sure uh, uh, that what uh, like is being uh, considered and talked about really fits uh, like with the South Main Street area and uh, and what we envision, what the port envisioned is something uh, that the residents can really uh, dream about and support and get behind as well. So you have to, uh, in that sense also, once you have that, uh, you know, it really provides a lot of uh, really a community support and momentum uh, to help accomplishing uh, those goals and realizing that vision. Um, and as uh, you know, I outlined, uh, like in the packet I handed, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I built a track record of, of really doing just that. Uh, you know, I led the effort in Rockland um, uh, as a member of the Board of Selectmen to lead a 40-hour uh, uh, smart growth overlay uh, zoning district for uh, housing and commercial and economic development opportunities uh, right uh, like along our Union Street corridor. Um, and at the same and at the same time we did that, oh uh, you know, oh uh, uh, I uh, I helped to create like a nonprofit group to really be the arm to oh uh, really be the resident voice to support oh uh, you know uh, the initiatives and the efforts that the town uh, has a uh, continue working to advance uh, you know and that's really <coughs> again the. Oh, you know, uh, the focus of the project really being from the ground up and resident driven, um, I think is really important because the last thing you oh, 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 don't want to have happen is the fact that, oh, you know, well, we as a town have a vision, oh, but it's, oh, you know, really a, a, a complete no-go or non-starter oh, for town residents, especially the residents, uh, oh, you know, whether it's in the South Main Street area, Oh, like or any other area, and I think with everything uh, that's happening with the train coming into New Bedford, uh, uh, on across the river, I think to be uh, exploring those things and bringing those type of partnerships in to uh, really explore those things, I think is an, uh, just an amazing opportunity that the town has right now. Very good, thank you. No problem, thank you. Mr. Roche, you good? I'm all set. All right. Mr. Mullen, back to you. Yes. So in, uh, well, I guess your remaining time, um, don't go, you've got 20 minutes left. Don't use all that, though. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, I can, I can <laughs> easily got, do that if you like. We, we gave you an hour. But, <laughs> okay. Um, why, should we, why should we hire you as, as a Kushnet's next, next uh, uh, town administrator? So this is clo so closing comments. And, yep. And what, what would you bring to the job? Why should we pick you as our next town administrator? Oh, why should you hire me? Um, so I believe... Oh, really, you should hire me because uh, like, I love this work. Um, I really have uh, a true passion for this work. I love, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, like I really love uh, the community. I love local government. Uh, like I love working to make uh, an impact, whether it's on an economic development issue or, you know, uh, an issue where there's Mrs. Smith, oh, uh, you know, uh, from Mill Street, for example, uh, just has a question about her trash pickup. Uh, like I love that because those are the things that uh, really make communities tick. Uh, like, and it gives it the fabric um, and the pride uh, that you have here. Um, and I think on top of that, I really love about a uh You know, I think, oh, uh, you know, that the opportunities that you have in terms, uh, like in the issues, all uh, all uh, that you're going to be dealing, with, whether it's Oh, uh, you know, we're working with the school department and the MSBA, uh, like on the new partial roof, all uh, for the elementary school, whether it's on the CWMP. Uh, you know, those are the things, um, those are the relationships that I really thrive on uh, in helping, um, uh, really, uh, working with the board to manage those issues and make uh, like all those initiatives a reality. Um, I also think just my experience, the fact Oh, uh, you know, that I've been involved in, oh, uh, you know, a local government, that I have been an administrator, that, uh, you know, I really, uh, as you have probably and hopefully seen, that, oh, uh, you know, I love this work and I take it uh, extremely seriously and, oh, uh, you know, 
I can have always believed that you have to oh, uh, take it seriously and responsibly. Oh, uh, but I really believe you can have fun. Oh, you know. Oh, and really enjoy all of it while doing it. Oh, uh, and having and having the opportunity to work for the town with all the department heads, uh, like in the employees you have here. Uh, like I've heard uh, nothing but incredible things. Uh, like about all your employees and your department heads. Uh, like and I really just love the opportunity to come in, uh, to dig in, to work with them, and to make. Oh, uh, and really. To continue making our, uh, uh, the town as a whole, oh, uh, you know, a really like a good, oh, uh, and strong and fun place to work and have a career, oh, uh, you know, I and you know, uh, to advance an environment here where, oh, uh, you know, everyone just loves everything about their job and it's just, oh, uh, you know, it sounds so hokey, but again, uh, like I love this work, I have a passion for it, I have experience. Uh, oh, you know, at many levels, at the state and local government, um, are actually working to achieve community uh, goals and priorities, uh, and I'm just really excited about the job and the uh, and the opportunity. Oh, uh, you know, but to really come before you to and frankly, the opportunity I've had to, oh, uh, you know, I've really come this far in the process as well. It's been uh, just incredible. Uh, you know, oh, uh, you know, but coming down 18 to 105 and. Oh, driving around the reservoir area there, it's a nice, and I mean, I've had oh, like a lot of fun these past oh, two months or so really doing that, and I'll, I'll get to know and love and appreciate oh, your community. So I thank you for the opportunity, and I, and I thank you for your consideration, and I will wish you all the luck, and no matter how oh, oh, where you go in your decision making, but um, I just have to say it's been a whole lot of fun and a great experience, uh, you know, having done what I've done the past two months here. So, thank you. And there are new materials in here that we didn't have before, correct? Well, yes, exactly. Yeah, like I wanted to highlight uh, some of the work experiences, uh, like in frankly uh, the economic development experiences, uh, you know, that I've been a part of both in Brockton and Rockland. Um, I um, I also included some of my work experience relating to budgets uh, for the county, uh, um, as well as. Our uh, grant initiatives, um, I've been a part of for the county uh, and for the town of Rockland. Um, and then, like, I did include our uh, five reference letters as well, just so, oh, you. Uh, you know, I can only talk so much about myself, and I really don't like uh, talking about myself. Uh, so, <coughs> and so rather than me talking and uh, wasting the rest of my 20 minutes, uh, like, I wanted uh, you to hear You're from You're entitled to your 20 minutes. I exactly. Mean, no, no. Bad sense of humor. Go no. Go thank you. I have an awful sense of humor, too, uh, which I think is kind of funny sometimes. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, that's that. I think I'm hilarious. I, oh, no, I do, too. I do, too, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yeah. I yeah. Absolutely. You're, you're a comedian in your own mind, huh? Yeah. Um, Mike, just one thing that I think you need to let the board know about. At the time uh, Mr. Mullen filed his application, he was indeed the assistant county director and he has uh, recently had a promotion. He is now the county director. Uh -huh. And his resume doesn't reflect that yet because it's, it happened very recently. Yes, it did. So I don't know if you mentioned that. I didn't hear you say so. I wanted the board to be aware. Yeah. You know, I promoted to the county. Oh, uh, uh, the middle of October, I was uh, like, actually, I'll oh, thank Hegarty, who oh, his reference is included in your packet. He retired, my old boss. Uh, like, oh, oh, thankfully, and uh, you know, and I'm honored by it. Uh, the three elected commissioners for the county, they all uh, had the faith and trust in me. Oh, uh, well, a few weeks ago, uh, they did promote me, uh, like, as, uh, like a, uh, as the county director. Uh, 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 which has been a great honor, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, really hasn't changed anything in terms of my thinking and wanting to be uh, here in a cushion. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Appreciate Thank it. you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Mullen, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank, Ms. thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kepa. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. We'll see you, Mike. Thank you. Talk thank to you soon. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you as well. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Do we want a five-minute recess or do we want to follow a five-minute yeah, recess? Five minutes, okay. Sure. Uh, motion for five-minute recess? So so second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. We're recessed for five. I'll work, Julie. Yep, thank you. 25th, 2019, it is 1.40, and we are meeting with uh, Julie Hebert, who is the fourth of four candidates for our uh, town administrator position. Julie's been our interim town administrator for the past two months, 
and is the town's uh, town accountant, chief financial officer for the town of Cushman as well. So, welcome, Julie. Let me tell you how the program goes. You get um, up to 15 minutes to make some opening comments, okay. um, and then we'll move to um, questions. Um, first, Mr. Gasper, sec, uh, Mr. Roche is third, and then at the end, you know, five to ten minutes. Why we should hire you as a town administrator? So. Okay. Um, with that, to you for uh, you know again up to 15 minute introduction, but okay. you know, and and just so you know, uh, uh, most people have been averaging about 45 minutes, but the whole hour is fine. So okay. whatever you want. All right. Well, thank first you. of all, I want to thank all of you for having me here today and for the opportunity that I've already had in being your interim town administrator. Um, it's, it was a, a nice boost of confidence um, when Brian left that you guys thought of me to take over. And it's been um, quite an experience. Um, you know, it's been a lot doing two jobs at once, but I've learned a lot. And um, if anything, whatever happens after this, it's an experience that I'll take with me and, you know, continue to grow from there. So I want to thank you guys for giving me that opportunity and um, for trusting me with the town for these last three months. Um, this is kind of weird for me because I already know you guys. Um, I work here, so um, it's weird for us too. <laughs> <laughs> so, giving a little background, I feel like you guys already know me, but I guess for the people at home, um, my my main background started off in law. So, I have my law degree. I'm a certified attorney. Um, I've kept my license up, and um, my first jobs were mainly in law. Um, the companies that I worked for that I did um, lawyer. Um, positions for um, were based in finance. So um, after working there for a multitude of years, um, taking the commute into Boston, I had an opportunity to move and take a town position as an accountant. Um, I have no real finance background. Um, my bachelor's is not in finance, um, but I was given an opportunity and I took it and um, I learned a lot really quick. Um, I think it's one of my strengths is that I can pick things up pretty quickly. So I went to the town of Blackstone, became their town accountant for um, about four years before I came here. Um, I think that my law background has really helped me with a lot of things for the municipality. Um, a lot of finance is based on mass general law here. Um, so having that law background in my finance world has been great because it helps me interpret um, what the statutes are saying and how we should be spending the money. Um, but for this opportunity, I think it's even more important. Uh, one of the things, I, I knew what I was getting into doing the administrator position, um, but there's a lot more legal aspect to the town administrator position than even I had um, anticipated. Um, so I think that having that <coughs> background um, is a good backdrop for me. So um, when issues come up, property issues, things like that, that I don't have direct experience with, my lab background has been a good backbone for me to um, look on with that. Um, that's just a little, that's a little background about me. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. I already know you guys, so anything else? <laughs> Okay. No, that's that's fine. Okay. That's fine. <coughs> the shocker there is you don't have a finance background. I, didn't I have no finance background. Just didn't click it. <coughs> yeah, just picks it up. You've, you've had me fooled for. <laughs> wow. So, the, um, so we've got questions. We're sort of we're asking the same questions for the most part to the candidates, and yeah. and the first one I've got for you is. Um, this is a so underhand softball that you're going to hit over the wall, but we're asking this. But I think for for the benefit of the people um, that are watching this at home, I think it's 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 good that we're asking all the candidates the same question. So yeah. the first uh, question is about the uh, the town budget and the town budget process. And as a town administrator, how would you manage that process? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how would you bring the department heads together? How would you coordinate with the departments that are outside the purview of the Board of Selectmen, how would you uh, work with the Board of Selectmen and present budgets and, um, again, yeah. underhanded softball, but everybody's yeah, got the is, same question. So this go, is my world. So go. This is your world. <laughs> so um, the budget is, is big, and I think um, the best method of um, getting ready for your budget for the next year, we always send out um, drafts to the um, different department heads and boards um, early. 
Um, I've actually already gotten them back um, for this year. I had a due date of November 20th and I've gotten them back from everybody, uh, almost everybody. Um, so we look at <coughs> what is your anticipated budget for the next fiscal year, any issues that are coming up, con contractual issues um, that we need to look at, um, you know, personnel issues, bring everything to the table, um, let us know what you're looking at. Um, also the capital plan, any big capital items that you're looking at, we kind of bring it all together early. Um, I think at that point, the best um, procedure is that the administrator with the finance director um, and or a, a member of the selectmen, um, if they want to, sit down with the bigger departments or the ones that have bigger changes um, to kind of go through the draft of the budget. Um, what is this What is this number here? What does it involve? Is there a way that we can um, reach this goal without having an increase um, in this line item? Um, trying to be creative before you present something to the selectmen. Um, to, to make sure that what you're looking at is the best budget at that moment for the departments. Um, after that point, we would present it to the selectmen. Um, I think it's important that the selectmen sit with the departments, especially the bigger ones, you know, your police, your fire, um, DPW, but the selectmen should see all the budgets, get to talk to the department heads to see what they're looking at and kind of get that scene back and forth. What are the increases that you're looking at? What are the capital items? Um, and at that point, um, we would go, as long as the selectmen approved everything, we would take that budget and bring it to the Finance Committee. Um, and then that kind of goes through, they, they meet with all the department heads. If there are any changes that occur from the time the selectmen see the budget um, to, you know, like it, if they occur after the fact, then I would bring the department back to the selectmen so that they can hear all of the changes. Um, I think it's important that everyone has a good idea of what they're looking at. Um, having multiple people with their own ideas sometimes there's like i said sometimes there's uh, an idea of you know an increase that you have and somebody might come up with an idea of how you could save money um, doing something different instead of just you know paying a contractor or something like that um, so it's good to bring everyone together and, and have those ideas flowing so that we can um, get the best um, overall budget that will be the best for the um, residents and for the taxpayers um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the, the process that I look at, <coughs> making sure everyone's approving everything, um, bringing to the Finance Committee um, the final budget from the selectmen, and um, once everyone's voted and approved, um, obviously at that point you're looking at your revenues to make sure you're balancing your budget out. So you start off with the expenses, at the same time you look at your revenues, um, trying to get creative with re what revenues you have. Um, so I know that this is something that's come up before. We've talked about indirect costs, um, um, any other pilot agreements, any any other kind of outside areas where you might be able to pull revenue to offset a cost. Um, all this stuff should be brought up and discussed ahead of time um, so that once we get through all the, the selectmen and the finance committee, we have a, a well-rounded budget that can go to town meeting. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, related but not. Um, okay. So in the town of Cushnet over the years, we've uh, we take a step back. We got the town budget's basically two big pieces. Piece one comes <coughs> under the Board of Selectmen. Piece two comes under the school department, the yep. superintendent of schools, the school committee. Mm -hmm. And and over the years, we've had uh, both, uh, you know, most recently very cooperative relationships. And but but in years past, it was. Um, um, uh, in some time, sometimes a hostile relationship where it was, you know, ours and yours, and um, I prefer the cooperative relationship. Yeah. And I guess, um, and that was, you know, this last budget cycle. I think that was there was a lot of evidence of the fact that it was a cooperative process. How do you foster that continuing, and how do you work cooperatively with the with the school committee and the superintendent and the business office at the school to to make sure that we all understand that it's one community and we're all sharing the dollars that are available yeah. to us. Um, so one of the things that um, Brian had initiated that um, we've been continuing, um, although the last few months have been difficult, um, we've been meeting with the school business administrator and the superintendent on a monthly basis to go through their current budget for, for the current fiscal year, what issues they're having, um, how they're looking for their surplus or deficit for the end of the year. Um, and then also discussing the future budget, what items are big items that might come up that will impact their budget for the next fiscal year, um, capital items, um, and talking about these uh, these um, things early 
I think it really helped and it showed again in, in last year's budget um, that there's a give and take obviously there's only so much money in the whole pool um, so when the school had certain items where they couldn't budge they needed to fund you know special ed costs or things like that the town looked inward too to say all right what can we give up maybe or um, finagle in-house you know maybe doing more in-house work or you know not taking on a certain position that might have been helpful for us but we can put it off for another year you kind of do the back and forth um, with the school and I think that those meetings have been really helpful to kind of get it started early so we have a good idea of what we're looking at for the future and for the current year um, so I would continue that um, and I, I do think it's really important to have a good relationship with the school we are one town um, we can't just ignore everything that's going on over there and kind of put up a wall to it, we have to work with them together um, so that we can make sure that our budget is sound, that it, it works for the town, it works for the school, um, and we can say that we did everything for both sides to make sure that we have what everybody needs for the year. All right, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Gaspar. You done? <laughs> <laughs> what sources of revenue would you use to balance budgets? What sources of revenue? On a year-over-year year basis. <laughs> yeah, well, so you're starting off with your tax levy. On a year over year basis. <coughs> yeah, every year. Your tax levy is the first thing that you would start with. So you're taking your levy from last year, you're adding your 2.5%. You're looking at your new growth estimate that you would get from the assessor. You're looking at your overlay that you would also get from the assessor. Um, and you plug in all of those figures and you would get your new um, estimated tax levy for the year. Then you look at your um, state receipts. So um, typically, we like to keep them level funded for a budget. We do get um, estimates from this, the House, from the Senate, from the governor um, throughout the budget process. And typically, it's not going up very much. So we like to keep it about um, level funded from the last year. Then you have your local receipts. So motor vehicle access, um, excise, um, various licenses, permits, fees. Um, and so what, I, what I've done in the past and looking at those has been um, taking a five-year average. So um, most recently we've been increasing the motor vehicle excise estimate for revenue. Mm -hmm. And that's because we've just been, the number has been so much higher. So when I started here, we were estimating $800,000 in that category and we were getting 1.5 million. So, <clears throat> that created a lot of excess that wasn't really necessary. Um, so we try to keep the number conservative where we know we're not gonna get less than that amount, um, but close enough where we're not building too much um, extra free cash and putting a burden on the taxpayers that we don't need to. Um, so you would take all of your um, local receipts, again, try to come up with a good average um, and make sure that the number is conservative. And then you have other sources of revenue. So for us right now, we have um, the ambulance, the receipts reserved from the ambulance. Um, we have free cash. We've used overlay in the past. Um, and in that category could also be if we did approve indirect costs, that would come from that category as well. But you only have so many categories that you can really work <coughs> with. Um, most everything is, when it comes to the tax, the tax levy and the state aid, you're kind of stuck with what you get. Because some of the ones that you mentioned, they're not reoccurring. So budgeting, for budgeting purposes, I would say ex -nay. Um I know we did certain things last year about overlay surplus. Yeah. Um, but that was on one-time expenditure, yep. which was supposed to be from the excise revenue. Yep. And instead we did it, we balanced the budget with that money and the previous town administrator only did it as a one shot where we were supposed to do more road payment. Okay. So Got it. Yeah, so so what you said is correct. Because that so revenue is not always there year over year. It's not always there. It's like the overlay surplus. If, if the assessors have so much built up, we know that we can go in and take a little bit from that, and those yes. will usually be spent on one time yep. expenditures so because you're not going to see a reoccurring every year. Exactly. So your other sources of revenue, um, the only one that I would say is reoccurring for us is the EMS, the receipts reserved from the ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, they have a, an amount that has been there since before I got here, mm -hmm. and then they've also been funding their debt payment for the new ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. Anything else, I mean, I mean, the free cash, the overlay, those are all supposed to be one-time expenses. Um, and one of the things that I, I did in coming in here too was 
they were using free cash as a recurring a, a recurring revenue, which you're not supposed to do. So um, the DOR frowns on it. I'm actually shocked that they allowed us to have budgets that used $1.2 million of free cash to balance Correct. the budget, increasing it, and, and it increases every year because like you're saying, if you're using it to balance your budget, every year your budget is based on that number plus whatever else you have, you know, your, your increases for salaries or, or whatever it might be. So you're gonna need to keep using that amount plus more mm -hmm. unless you have another revenue that comes from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I did when I came in here was look at how to reduce that dependence on free cash and we were able to do that pretty successfully. I think we're down to um, about 460,000 when mm -hmm. I came in it was at 1.2. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're right. So those should those should should be one-time expenses, um, overlay and free cash. But um, you know sometimes things happen. Yeah. yeah. We actually charged the previous town administrator with weaning us a hundred percent off using yeah. free cash for budgetary reasons. Yeah. Last in editing last year, um, because you know that that that's part of my job too. I think as the finance director, I'm in charge of the finances. Um, I look at that budget just as much and, and try to be creative in coming up with other ways. Um, I've been bringing up the indirect costs as a way to as an, uh, another source of revenue. Um, and every year we, we've we've gotten along with it too late in the process to be able to use it. Um, but yeah, last year was it was frustrating. It was really hard because we had a plan to cut it back again. Um, but I think there were just so many things. With the, with the school having a lot of special ed costs as well, um, at the end that just right. making the balanced budget was, was pretty tough. Absolutely. So. Right, thank you. Yeah. Do you believe the current public pension system is sustainable? If so, why? If not, what reform would you suggest to make it sustainable? We love this. <laughs> so, th this is a tough one. We've talked about this before. Um, the pension system, I think it's it's working for right now. I know that um, it was on the pay as you go, right? And then the actuaries came over, GASB regulations changed. They looked at how can we create a liability to look for the future, and they did that. So what we're paying now is the pay as you go amount plus the future amount, what, what that liability would be if everyone here retired today, which what isn't real. Um, so I think that the number, uh, looking to the future and, 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 and that kind of idea, it's worked and I know that it has an end date, like for us our end date of the old liability is um, 2028, so relatively soon we'll be done with that kind of excess liability and just continuing the pay as you go. Um, it's hard to say if it's going to fail in the future. Obviously, the the impact is the taxpayers. As long as they're taxpayers and, and the state can force the taxpayers to keep paying the bill, it works. Um, if it hits a point where the taxpayer... <laughs> no, right, though? I mean, so ultimately, that's it. That's the truth. That's the truth. As long as, as, long as yeah. they can put the bill on the taxpayers and you, ha you have mm -hmm. no choice but to increase your taxes, it'll work. Mm -hmm. um, I think at some point could there be an issue where the tax burden has become too high and the, the state will have to step in and do something else to help? I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, and, and it goes that way with a lot of things. Um, I know we brought up OPEB as well and it's along that same avenue. The only difference that I see with OPEB is right now the retirement um, is, is handled by the state retirement system. With OPEB, we are paying our own as you go health insurance. So even though we have to fund the OPEB and, and put it into this trust, we can pull the money out ourselves and pay for, if, if all of a sudden a bunch of people did retire and we had this huge health insurance increase next year, we could pull money from our OPEB to help offset the cost for us right now. Um, so that, that's the only difference I see is it's, it's our own kind of internal system as opposed to through the state. But yeah, I think at some point, we the, the state's most likely going to have to help out with something where the taxpayers will be. PO'd? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To say it politely? Yeah. It's not an endless piggy bank, right? <laughs> and I think no. that's the mentality of some people in government. No, and we I, just keep going back to the taxpayers. We yeah. just keep going back to the taxpayers and you can't just, sooner or later, I mean, there's only so much disposable income within right. the families that make the composition of the community, right? Not yeah. only just here in Cushnip, but everywhere, right? right. So. And I, but I think that goes with a lot of things with the budget. Um, and I know, I know Brian did a lot with, let, let's say, looking at all, not just like um, 
a retirement expense, looking at all of our expenses and all of our revenues and, and thinking outside the box how we can make them better. So when um, we went out and got a different health insurance and we um, changed our health insurance, I, I think when I did the numbers, we've saved about $120,000 this year sure. from switching our health insurance. Um, so yeah, I mean, at, at some point, some of these bigger things might break the bank for the taxpayers, but in the meantime, I think it's important that the people who are here are thinking outside the box to come up with some different ways of easing some of the expenses and easing some of the revenues. Um, one of the other things that comes to mind is the Green Communities Grants. Mm -hmm. um, our, our, I think Marilee sent an email the other day that we're down like 87% on our, our electricity usage in town hall yeah. because we've switched over up to all the high efficiency. Yeah, everything. And I mean, that budget, I think when I got here was like 80,000, it's down to 20. So I mean, 60,000, it's not a lot in the scheme of a $32 million budget, but it's it's a it's lot. Money. It's, it's, it's money. It's real money. It helps out. Yeah. I don't like when people say 10,000 is not a lot of money when yeah. and, and we compare it to a 32 or $35 million right. dollar budget wherever we're at now, but it's real money. It's I mean, money. It doesn't matter if it's 5,000 or 10,000, it's real money. Right. No. Yeah. Back, yeah. To you, back to you, Julie. Okay. Another question, Mr. Gasper? At year-end, departments are able to transfer money from one line item to another. In the past, those transfers would be voted on by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee before the expenditure would be, could be made. In the last few years, that process has diminished. What is your opinion regarding the issue? So, I'm a legal person, and I follow the law. So, and, I, and I'm such a straight-A student that it's hard, for me, it's hard for me on some of these things. So my opinion is you're, you're not supposed to do the expense until you have an appropriation. So you should not charge that amount until you have the appropriation, which would have to be approved by the selectmen and the finance committee. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's the answer he was looking for. Um, um, I'll set Mr. Gasper. Um, <coughs> his right answers and yeah, his wrong I answers, know. right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, his right answers and his wrong you answers. That, you made that one clear. Right? <laughs> I didn't know if there was any more. <clears throat> Mr. DeRoche. Are you all set? I'm sorry. No, I'm, all set. I'm all set. Mr. DeRoche. <laughs> uh, Julie, how do you uh, balance the town's desire to deploy the best and the brightest with the yeah. town's ability to pay? Yeah, so I think um, I think it's it's, first of all, it's been really great that the selectmen have looked at doing the wage and classification and doing it correctly. Um, I know again from a legal standpoint it's important that we cover ourselves and make sure that we're paying people the right amount and not getting into an issue where there's a, um, an Equal Pay Act um, violation. You know, this only we've talked about this, there's only so much money in the bucket, positions are only worth so much, and a cushion it, we've we've kind of talked about wanting to stay in the middle. We're a small community, we're not a city. Um, we can't afford to pay the most money, uh, you know, at the, at the very top of the scale. Um, but we should do a little bit better than the very bottom too. And so I think that it's important that we, we keep looking at the middle, but I think there are also things that the town can do to make people happy beyond a salary amount. Um, and it's not, it, it isn't big things. I know that you guys have looked at the um, hours and the hour schedule and when you've considered it, you've thought about the employees too and it, it, it is a benefit for the employees um, as well as the residents, um, which is a small thing that doesn't cost the town anything, but it does a lot for the employees and keeping them happy. Um, one of the things that I think is important as a leader, as a boss, to the, to the staff here um, is keeping the morale up by making sure people are encouraged when they're doing well. Um, again, it's something that doesn't, you know, letting people know, hey, you did a really good job with this. Enjoying the environment that you work in means more than money for some people. Um, and one of the things that I, I would like to do along those lines, um, which kind of also goes along with helping improve communication with the residents and with the selectmen, um, it would be really great if, if I had the time, if I could do this. Um, to do like a monthly newsletter. Um, actually, my town administrator in the town I live in, Dighton, she does this, and I think it's fantastic. It kind of gives an overview for, you know, the residents of like the bigger things that are going on. But at the end, she always includes a section where I think she calls it the Big Cheese Award, but it recognizes one of the departments for something good that they did. And I think doing something like that, whether it's through a newsletter or some other way of encouraging department heads, employees, staff, 
anybody who would work for the town um, that you're being recognized and people appreciate that you did this you know good work I think sometimes that makes up for a salary pay increase so how do you feel about what direction we can move in with economic development I know Henry is creating a uh, we're working on and town is working on a new master plan yeah so mm. so this is funny for me um, I thought a lot about the economics um, because the Kushnet enjoys being a small town you know you, mm -hmm. what I gather from the people when I talk to the residents is that um, you it, it's a small town you enjoy the fact that there are no street lights here that's that's something that's revered between all the you know the residents um, so the economics it's interesting because my sense is that people don't necessarily want all this <coughs> booming economy to come to a cushion to disrupt the small community farming historic town that we have um, but at the same time we need to think about how we can um, prepare for revenue needs in the future um, I think doing the master plan is a great idea we have the CWMP that we'll be talking about tomorrow night um, there are a lot of big um, things coming up where we could bring in some econ you know some some different um, industry to the town but maybe do it in a way that won't upset that small town feel um, so I think that the best thing we can do is to discuss it ahead of time to get all the groups not just the boards get the residents involved which would happen in a master plan survey um, bring everyone together hear what people are are thinking what their needs are what they want um, and and then kind of go from there but um, I think it would be a full community um, discussion because everyone again my sense is people don't really want this boom of you know economy of you know stores and changing the culture of this town but we need something that will help ease the burden for the taxpayers at some point in the future so I think just being as prepared as we can be doing these plans and getting it all together with everyone's opinions would be the best route all right well thank you very much oh, thanks that was the last question. Last question. All right, Ms. Hubert, you've got uh, <laughs> five to ten minutes. I won't need it. Why, I why should Why should we hire you? As that's right. Okay. Right. right. We have other people here with. Uh, you've never been a town administrator before. No, no, I've never. Um, so obviously, I I lack the experience that some of the other candidates might have. Um, I've never been a town administrator, but I do have. Um, municipal background with finance and I have a, a law background um, I think both are relevant to the town administrator's position a lot of the things that the town administrator would be handling are things that um, I've already managed between doing both of those positions um, I think it's an advantage for me that I already work here I know the department heads I know the selectmen I know the boards um, we have a great group of department heads that I work with on a daily basis and I, I think we all have a mutual respect for each other um, so having that relationship already is a huge benefit um, <clears throat> you know I just um, I think I I don't have the experience but I've picked up on a lot of things quickly in the past again I have no finance background I just picked it up um, I care a lot about where I work I love this town I you know I've worked here for three years and I really enjoy it it reminds me so much of the town that I live in and I loved moving to the town I moved to in Dighton because I hated the city you know I worked in Boston so and I know you do too mm -hmm. when you work in the city you you grow this appreciation for the small town the quiet the country and um, I see that here too and I and I just love working here um, trying to think of what else I want to say you know I just um, I appreciate the opportunity um, I'm a driven person this is it was an opportunity that opened up I always had a, a an end goal of maybe being an administrator someday and um, when this opportunity came up I I had to go for it I think um, I think I would be really good at it I care a lot um, I'm pretty driven and I I would just want to do everything I could to make a cushion as you know a better place so Anything Thank else for me? No, I think we're good. That's it. Okay. Uh, you kept us on a good schedule. So okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you, Julie. I'll just see Okay. Good on talk to you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. <laughs> That's Julie. Yes. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.
Um, so I, I, we, I mean, we never really talked about the process and we never talked about coming to conclusions and how we, we would do that. We've got to do that in open session, honestly. Um, I, we've now met with, um, we've now met with the four. In my head, uh, I think there are two that I'd consider and two that I probably would not. Um, the only, and I think either of them would be acceptable candidates. The only, um, additional step I've considered I wanted to meet with the candidates first I've not done any of this but to speak maybe with some of the me uh, members of the screening committee to see what they thought about the candidates and you mm -hmm. know I've not said who the two I prefer who the two I don't no, no, I, I just sense. but I, I I mean I'm one person I if, if you two are comfortable if, you, if you've got a decision I'm not going to point us in the <coughs> direction if, if you're ready to move we can move but um, the, the, the piece I'd like to do to feel like I've completed the process in my mind is to speak with with some of the people on the screening committee to find out what their thoughts are. I suspect that they've ranked, the, in, in their heads, ranked the four that we've talked to and maybe saw something that I didn't. So I would I would think that would be the only step I need. But I think this needs to happen quickly because, I, you know, there are others that are other that are finalists elsewhere and are we still, we've still got somebody that's a finalist elsewhere. Of your remaining four candidates, I think one is in a hiring process elsewhere. Okay. And the <clears throat> other two are, and two are not. Okay. So well, two and two. What what are, you, what are you all what are you thinking? I'd like the holiday weekend to digest some of what we've gotten, look over some of the notes. Okay. And we I've got some new We got some new material from Mr. I've already done saying. a little bit of uh, talking to some other screening committee members that I didn't have on as my appointees. I think it's very good that you do that and mm -hmm. speak to them and keep an open mind that, you know, some of the reasons why some of the some of these individuals may want one over the other. I'm very open minded when I'm discussing that with, with these with the screening committee members. Uh, there is it may be advantageous for one person <coughs> to be nominated as the next mm -hmm. town administrator and and not others, right? So I, I, I think that it's it's up to us um, to figure that out. And so I think that you're spot on. Maybe you should have that conversation. And I was going to pick up the phone this past week, and I said, no, I, I, I don't want them to point me toward or away somebody. I want a first impression, and then I, and then I want the conversation. Yeah, so. and and you know, it's it was interesting because after our first with uh, Ron San Angelo, he had left the interview. I had actually called him up that afternoon and asked him a few more. Um, follow-up questions because you know it was something that we set a timeline to I thought it was important that I reach out to him and speak to him and we had you know a good conversation for a half an hour 40 minutes and I may want to do that with the candidates that we just interviewed today so I mean with holidays coming up upon us it's two days away That's right they let you know we'll figure something out maybe discuss it you know and and see what you know we, we charged the committee would would a would a certain obligation to do for yep. the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mr. Pecos was, uh, you know, in front of that um, with Chairman Dakin, so I think that we need to consider that as well, and ultimately it's, you know, it, we, we try to figure out who the, the individual is going to be the best fit for the for the community, you know, and what's going to work, what's going to work best for the town. I think, I think these questions, um, you know, I, I like your question, um, you know, working with the school committee and, and the and school business administration because we, we did have over the years, uh, yes, you and I were both former finance committee members, we, we, we did have some hostile yeah. and it wasn't wasn't pleasurable trying to divvy up the pie, right? Yeah. And, we, and, 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 you know, it, it's tough, you know, you, you got these unions on this side and, and needs on this side and then you have the school committee <coughs> with their own that, that we as the Board of Selectmen don't see and hear every day, right? So it's, you know, and I think that, you, you know, we've done a pretty good job of trying to bring that together over the last several years and, you know, I think it's it's opened my eyes for sure, yeah. and having a better relationship with yeah, the schools um, than, than what it has been in the past and, you know, you're not knowledgeable on what the hell's going on at the school department I think at least knowing um, that we have a certain amount of pie divvied up and we understand their issues and, and the problems that they're facing uh, it helps it really does I know it's helped me anyway so I, I like that and you know we just got to figure this out and hopefully the board will come up with a, a good plan for the future 
Mr. Doris, what are your thoughts? Well, I agree that time is of the essence, okay. but there's no immediate rush to judgment. I would like to have a week go through the holiday. Right. I'd like to pick a know, date to today, decide, though. Let's, let's set a target to, for to decide, you know, and I have spoken with different uh, uh, search committee members already, and um, so, you know, I do have a direction that I am going in, but it still needs to refine it. Okay. So we do. Um, how about, how about a? a um, and, uh, um, we've, we've got a we've got a meeting scheduled tomorrow night. Yeah, it's, too, tomorrow it's, night. Too, it's too quick. Mm -hmm. But how about a daytime meeting next week? Um, got a date? I mean, um, Tuesday the third in the morning. I could I could also do Monday this I could also do Monday the second in the morning. Yeah, but Tuesday, this is Tuesday's better. Mondays are kind of tough. All right, Tuesdays works. Do you want to do that Tuesday, Tuesday the second? What time? Eight eight thirty. I, I don't have a problem. I, I have a pretty open schedule. This Monday's kind of yeah. Tuesday the third, and I can do eight thirty. Eight o'clock. Tuesday the third, eight a.m. You like those eight a.m.s, huh? I, I sooner the <laughs> sooner the better. Yeah, yeah we got a better. <laughs> eight a.m. Nine o'clock. Um, nine o'clock. <laughs> No, is it's eight, eight, eight o'clock. Is eight, eight o'clock? Right? That's fine. We'll yeah, that's fine. Another way. Um, and we'll let's let's a little bit and just with, the, have with the plan to with the, the with the plan to make a decision at that meeting, and we'll all do whatever additional well, outreach to. to the candidates, mm -hmm. uh, potentially um, <coughs> additional outreach to the screen committee members, potentially, and and hopefully come to a decision at that meeting, uh, eight o'clock on December third. I'll make sure we post. We're not that. inviting any other candidates to our decision making process. Um, no, I, I think that would be bad for. No, I no, I don't think we. It, no, Mr. Bay, candidates, no, so. generally yeah. speaking, yeah. it's inappropriate for them to sit in. And listen to our deliberation. Even though your meeting is. It's is, an open meeting. It's an open meeting. It's an open meeting. And they have a right to yep. do it. It is not considered professionally appropriate for candidates to sit in on your decision. It, it, it just makes it awkward. It makes it Nor awkward. anyone else's interview. Generally, yeah. the, 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 the universal behavior is they do their interview and they leave. That's okay. It. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's, it's an open meeting, but it would be awkward. <coughs> so, uh, and we've expedited this relatively quickly since yeah, the screening so. committee, screen so. committee's turned this over to us. I mean, well, I don't think we can do any faster than what we have, really. Yeah, a couple things, if I may, Mr. Yeah, yeah, just uh, take those I'd suggest to the board. Um, number one, uh, the normal procedure, um, and, and which also comports with the law, um, is you pick your candidate. <clears throat> and there's a couple of different ways to do that. I'll make a couple of suggestions to you to help expedite the process. Um, but you do that in open meeting, obviously. <clears throat> um, then the next step, and it's not really in my contract with you, but I don't care about that. You, you guys know I'll do anything it takes to help you get the right person. But <clears throat> there should be some due diligence done on the resume. So when you pick your candidate, this would be some verification. Mm -hmm. And I'm not suggesting to you in any way that any of your candidates have done anything to be completely forthcoming and truthful about their resumes. But as President Reagan once famously said, Trust um, but verify. Trust but verify. Yeah. So I would like, and in fact, the screening committee asked about it, and I said to them, "There's no point trying to check resume verification on, you know, 23 candidates. So <clears throat> proper time to do that is once you've selected your candidate, then let me do that for you. Um, I'll get you the documentation that proves that what they say is accurate, degrees, things like that." Um, and that's just a, and I'm sure it's everybody, whoever you pick, is going to give you exactly what they say is on their resume. But you should do that. Um, God forbid you hire somebody and you find out in five years they don't have the degree they said they had. That's going to make you look bad. It's going to make me look bad. <clears throat> and it's going to make everybody look bad. Plus it's falsification and it's, 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 a, it's a grave ethics violation. So. So you've done that for the board already, right? So we don't have to do that. As far I as degrees, we'll do it, but only on the one candidate. Because frankly, doing a cab on, on five oh. people, three people, four people, yeah, it's just a waste of time. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a pause. Once you make your decision, who the candidate is, and you announce it, and you say, we're offering you the position, then there's a pause while we do that. It's just a couple days. I can usually get it done in a day. <clears throat> and I just call and say, yep, verification, everything's good. I get, I get the records in here. The copy is made for each of the board members so you can see, yep, everything they said is true. Then you decide what you want to do for reference checks. Now, <clears throat> um, I can't 
urge you in the strong enough possible terms to check references because and that can be a couple of different things um, again I only you have a legal right to do it. Mr. With Healy's many. got reference letters from two people I know. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. legally, you have you have the right to do it on as many. Do anything once people become finalists that you want. I've got verification from all of them that they don't mind being publicly identified. Um, <clears throat> so, but it's a lot easier to just do it on your one selected candidate. Yeah. And the board can do different things. Um, you can ask me to check references. Happy to do it. I think it's better if you do it because you want to ask those questions of prior employers and you want to hear them say whatever it is. And then you might have follow-up questions. So sometimes board members will say, um, okay, um, you know, Dave, you're going to check this former employer and Kevin, you're going to check that former employer and Roger, you're going to check this former employer. However you want to divvy it up. Um, we haven't actually asked them for references. Some submitted. I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was has. Thinking. Yeah. I so did notice that <coughs> some normal did some time. Right. Yeah. Right. The right. Normal yeah. time to ask Mr. for Mr. Mullen, I think, gave us a couple of letters. Uh, yeah, and that, that's there. normal. But the the requisite time to ask for references is when you extend an offer of employment. Yeah. And then you say to them, Hey, we'd like to offer you the, uh, the position. <clears throat> We're going to do it for verification of your resume, um, and we'd like however many references you want. Um, <clears throat> and you decide what mix of character and work references you want. Typically, for this kind of a process, you get work references, not character references. Um, <clears throat> so you ask for three to five work references, and then you decide before you get them what the process of verification is going to be. And sometimes, you know, I had boards of selectmen when I was a candidate actually go to the town where I worked and mm. set up interviews and brought people in to talk about me and that's a pretty rich process but um, yeah. <clears throat> it takes some time I don't know that you need to do that but I'm just sort of saying it's kind of the penultimate process the more normal process is um, the candidate gives you two or three and if you see on that list of references there's something conspicuously absent like the candidate that you like and you want it and you've extended the offer to doesn't have the chairman of the board of selectmen they work for, well, you might want to give that chairman a call. Because <laughs> maybe there's something going on there and you want to know about it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then once the reference check is on the resume verification is done, um, then the board, um, once all that information is compiled, the board would typically meet again, probably at your next regular meeting or special meeting, and basically because you got the advantage of all that information. I'll be giving it to you privately, but you want to share it with the public. The board checked the following things. As I said, your screening committee is expecting you to check the resumes. Mm -hmm. They offered to do it, and I waved them off. <clears throat> I said, that's not appropriate for the screening committee. That's appropriate. That's the board's turf. So they, they very graciously said, sure. So you want to share with the public that you've done that step and that everything checked out. And Anybody wants a copy of so-and-so's master's degree, here it is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the reference check basically decide, depending how you divvy that work up, you want to report back to one another. Again, everything you do is public. So, hey, I called so-and-so, and I called so-and-so, and they said this. That's all public. And usually that'll check out pretty well. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then once that's done, then... Um, Basically, your work is done, and you've already, at that point, you've already extended an offer of employment to a candidate. So during that pause while you're checking those things, usually you say to the or candidate, contract. send us your draft contract. Um, and it's going to take them a few days to prepare that draft contract. Some of these folks have been out interviewing, so they've already got it done. Oh, we, alternatively, we could say, here is your draft contract. I mean, that well, <clears throat> what I would suggest to you, at the next meeting when you pick your candidate mm. and you extend the offer I'll give them a call and say hey the board has chosen you um, congratulations or the chair can do that whatever you guys would like um, we'd like to have you prepare your draft contract and submit it to the board um, at that same meeting next Tuesday when you do this um, you make a decision uh, I would then like to meet with you in executive session and chat with you about what you're thinking in terms of benefits and pay and I'll give you the benefit of you know what's normal for a community your size um, <clears throat> and if you say hey Kev what's going on in this area deferred compensation or Kev what's going on on vacation I'll tell you so you'll know what are these folks probably going to be expecting 
and then you set some parameters in terms of what you do and don't want to do, that's executive session, because that's contract negotiation, yes. mm -hmm. perfectly legal. Um, <clears throat> so you get all that work done. So the steps are you meet next time, you talk, you pick your candidate, you make an, an extension of the offer to hire. Um, <clears throat> the same meeting, <clears throat> you go in executive session, you talk about you know, the contract parameters, um, the chairman or I calls the candidate, says congratulations, send us your contract. In the four or five days that takes, um, we're checking references, we're verifying the resume, and then you come back, and hopefully by then you've got a con draft contract, and you review it. And I'm more than happy to sit and work. There's going to be some negotiation, guaranteed, because I've never <laughs> once, if it happens, great. But I've never once seen where candidates' expectations for what they want in that draft and what you want are going to match from the get-go. If it does, well, you know, you're probably off of the job of a candidate who's underselling themselves. If, you know, so you want them to be a little aggressive and you want to be, you know, hey, this is what we can do. So there's going to be some negotiations. The last time I did this with you three years ago, <clears throat> the board asked me to negotiate on your behalf to get it to where either to accomplish the board's objective, i.e. what you had said in executive session, and in the case of your of, uh, of um, Brian, I wasn't able to do that. <clears throat> so I had to get it down as close as I could get it, and then I had to bring Brian to you. And then you had to have a face-to-face to, -face to yeah. iron out the last couple of points. Happy to do that for you if you want. The other alternative is the candidate sends you their draft and you meet with them. Um, now you're entitled to the part of that that is when you're talking directly to the candidate you're supposed to do that in public session. The part where you want to strategize amongst yourselves about how much you have the right to go back into executive session because you're continuing to discuss contract parameters. So it's kind of a tricky process. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But I'll sit right here with you and make sure everything's all buttoned up according to Question, what, why do we not generate a contract and say, here it is, this is what we're proposing? You can do that as well. Yeah, <coughs> if you want to do that, that <coughs> yeah. yeah. You can. If well, you want to do that, that's what I'd want to do. Wanna, what yeah. you're saying is they may want to introduce, what Kevin's saying is because another, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, um, what, 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 what I'm hearing is, is because they've worked in other towns where they might offer different benefits okay. they're looking to get these the problem that this we this board would have in doing so is once you introduce that to one person's contract it opens the door to all other department heads and and now they're going to want those same kind of benefits as well so that's where this board would be fighting that that trend yeah so we'll, the we'll you, that out. I, i'd right. be more inclined to come up with our contract than have them so <clears> here's <throat> the reality you're dealing with today um there's a statute out there, chapter four, Master Law, chapter 40 um, section one five, under which town managers negotiate contracts. Brian had one with you under that statute, because I've seen it, and it says right in it, this contract, blah, blah, blah. Now, <clears throat> there is a lawyer that pro bonos to the Town Managers Association, and he gives them every year a draft of oh, I'd love to start. Contract. I'd love to start with a standard form boilerplate. So that boilerplate covers all the issues. That's fine. Generally, <clears throat> the language of that boilerplate is understandable to everybody except for one section. The section that deals with Chapter 158, the public indemnification law. It's the same law yeah, that, I, yeah. that covers you yeah. and covers the candidate. And Kev, you may remember this, but yeah. it was the it was the only real sticking point when we negotiated with Brian, yeah. because town managers and boards of selectmen <clears throat> are the only people under Masters of Public Law which have certain exemptions in that statute that protects everybody else and doesn't protect you. So <clears throat> town managers seek to button that up in the contract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you got we gave careful. another contract. We we gave another contract in town where that language was in. We we modified it. To yeah. So police chiefs yeah. can. And I know you recently did the police yeah. chief. Con I police chiefs that. are under a different section of that same yeah. statute. But there's only a few people that are under that statute. There's police chiefs. I don't think fire chiefs are in there yet. Police chiefs, town managers, town accountants, CFOs, um, are all in there. They have different sections, but they're all in there. Other folks, not so much. 
So it's a little bit of tricky uh, waters. <clears throat> and of course, as Kev says, you know, the, the stress is you get other people. And even though under your form of government, you don't have what some towns have, which is a charter or a bylaw that says, you know, these two people is typically the town manager, town administrator, and the superintendent of schools do not get the same benefits and pay and all that as everybody else. Everybody else is over here. These two people are over there. You don't have that. So you've got a different dynamic to deal with, which it is. You got to be careful. Yeah. Because you've got other people that are going to come looking for those things. Sure. So that's a political decision that only you three gentlemen can decide on. But I'm very ha happy to help you get through it because what you got to balance is their expectation of the person you want to hire with um, with what's you know what's reality locally. What you don't want to have happen. The only thing that I'm afraid of is you can't come to terms. And then you can that it walks on you. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to see that happen. Yeah. Well, right. let's let's start with step one. Step one. Let's get together next Tuesday morning. Let's let's uh, let's all do whatever homework we feel is appropriate between now and then. Let's get get together next Tuesday morning. <coughs> let's um, come to an agreement on who we're going to make an offer to, and we'll yeah. we'll take the next steps. Okay. One other thing to think about for that part of the meeting when you just when you're going to decide who your candidate is, um, it kind of usually goes one of two ways. Board members. Somebody speaks first, and then there's a certain amount of deference that gets paid. So maybe you're thinking this is your person, and Dave goes first, and you say, "Oh, well, maybe I'll defer to Dave." And you no, that's not, that's not the way we work. No, no, no. Okay, that's okay. Not, that's I, that's not 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 I had a way to head that off. <laughs> no, no. The next thing I was going to say is no. usually because <laughs> you guys are strong-willed people who run for public office, no. usually that's not a problem. You got yeah, no we'll, problem I'll saying, fine. "Okay, great." Right. Right. Then, then with that being the case, yeah. you don't need to do anything except just talk. And I've got, in my head, I've got two that would be acceptable to me. Um, so, great. I could be I could be swayed on, but um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you.